hello viewers you're welcome to my youtube channel in this episode today i will be answering your question regarding migrating into canada as an international student who is married what do i do with my child with my uh my ward whichever the case is what should you do with them can i include them in the application if i don't include them in the application when will be a good time for me to bring my kids into canada i promise i was going to do a video on that and that is what i'll be addressing in this episode today so i'm going to stay tuned i will be dissecting that interview. okay viewers so welcome back to my youtube channel i still remember my humble self mc bernardino this is canada reality where I dish out content for those that are in canada and those that are aspiring to migrate into canada is this your first time on this youtube channel do me the honor hit on the subscribe button turn on the notification bell so that anytime i drop a video you'll be among the first to get it for our returning viewers that always believe in us we believe in you too and we will never let you down please endeavor to share this video on whatever platform with whoever you feel will benefit from it. last video for some of you that have not seen that video that i did i said free visa into canada many people were like is that real that is not true what do you mean free visa to canada and uh, by the time they actually watched that video they were convinced about what i was talking about as an international student that is married that video actually addressed to you so if you haven't seen that video please go to my playlist and view that video for yourself all right so in that video just a quick long summary i said as an international student your spouse he or she is entitled to what is called spousal open work permit i won't go so much into it but you can actually see it for yourself so on that in that episode i said i'll be addressing if you have a child what do you do about it and that's what i'll be telling you today in this episode i'll be telling you what does cic ircc canada immigration what do they say about it and that is what i'll be telling you in this episode all right in order for you to actually understand this better i need to break it down in the context of ircc ircc wants to determine the child that you're talking about is he or she is he a minor or what is he or she so when i say minor i mean is it 17 years and above or below what is the case is and also in this episode i'll be taking you to ircc website where you can actually see for them for yourself what they actually expect from you and your child if you're coming into canada to come and study so let me take you to IRSS website so minor children before entering Canada minor children who want to study in Canada must apply for study permits before they enter Canada this includes minor children who come from parents who already have a valid study or work permit if they are coming to Canada with the parents who have a valid study or work permit they don't need to provide a letter of acceptance from a school when they apply for study permit before your minor child travels to Canada, make sure the DLI is on the list of those with approved COVID-19 readiness plan. They don't, they won't be allowed to enter Canada if their DLI isn't on the list, on this list. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, let me give you an hypothetical example. I'm married, my wife is back home, I'm an international student here in Canada. So I can apply for my spouse to come into Canada that was the video I did the last time and for my child what I can actually do is that if my child is not in Canada he or she is outside Canada I have to apply for one option is that I need to apply for study visa for such a child and before I apply for the child the child doesn't need to have a designated letter, uh, acceptance letter from a designated learning institution in Canada. No, he, do, he or she doesn't need that. But I need to apply for a study visa because I am already studying here and my wife is coming on a work permit. Then for my child, I can apply for a study visa for him or her to come into Canada. I don't know whether you understand that. I need to find a school here in Canada that will accept the child to study. If I get the letter from them and all those information, then I can apply for a study visa for such a child to come along with my wife on the other hand if i don't want to do that i can apply while my wife is coming on an open spousal work permit i can apply for a visitor visa for the child but in most cases i will advise you if you can apply for study visa for such child find a school here i as the father I have to go to go around my neighborhood find a school that will accept the child get all the document get the paper and apply for study visa so my child can come along with my wife to canada to come and join me and the good thing about canada is that if my child is a minor i mean if he or she is in preschool elementary school or high school 
study is free. I mean, I do not have to pay for tuition fee for the child. But if the child is above minor and is probably going to college or university, then I have to pay for the tuition fee. Once again, if the child is in preschool, elementary school or high school, it is free for all Canadians, for people that have children that are in Canada. And going to school is compulsory, so I have to send the child to school. You can't afford to keep your child at home and not go to school. So I have to do that. And if my child is still in high school and lower, I, I don't get to pay tuition fee for such child. But if he or she is grown and needs to go to college or university, then you have to start thinking of the tuition fee for such child. Okay, now let's talk about if the child is already in Canada. Take for instance, the child, my, my son or daughter came along with my wife on a visa. So my wife came on a spousal visa, but my child came on a visitor's visa. So what happens? And the child is already in Canada with us. How do we get him or her to go to school? What should we do? Don't forget the child came in on a visitor's visa. So let us see what the law says about it. So minor children already in Canada. Minor already in Canada should apply for study permits. In some province or territory, they may need want to receive social services. Minor children who are already in Canada may study without a study permit if they one, are in kindergarten, no matter what their parents' status is in Canada. So if they are in kindergarten, no matter their parents' status, as long as they are in Canada, they do not need a work, they do not need a study permit wants to go to preschool, primary or secondary school and have a parent who is allowed to work or study in Canada. A refugee or refugee claimant. Half parents who are refugee or refugee claimants came to Canada as a visitor for a course or program of studies of six months or less. Will study in the course or program for six months or less. Are in Canada by themselves. So, if the rule is actually there you can actually go online to read more about this yourself so let me just summarize what that's saying take for instance if your child came in on a visitor's visa to canada then in this situation in this situation your child needs a study permit to attend school the only reason why he or she doesn't need a study permit is if the child meet the exemption that I just read. That is when your child do not need a study permit if he or she is already in Canada. Once again, the main thing that you need to understand is that if your child is attending preschool, elementary, uh, or high school, he or she do not need to pay tuition free. School here is free up until high school level. All right, so in summary, what do I suggest? What do I have to say? So hypothetically, looking at examples that I've seen around me, I know a lady that actually came into news, uh, Newfoundland earlier this year, and what she did was that while she was studying, she went around that area to get a school for the, child, for the two kids that are still back home. She was able to get a letter from them and all the documents she needs, and she went online to apply for study visa for the two child, kids that are in Nigeria. And what happened was that she, another thing again she did to convince IRCC to issue that visa was that she got a uh, she got a report from the children's school stating the difference between why she was in Nigeria with them and now that she's not with them. There's a sharp drop in their performance, in their academic performance, and she was able to convince IRCC why the children needs to be with her in Canada. And at the end of the day. I can tell you that the visa was granted. Another scenario that I would like to share with you is this couple, they are married, and what they did was that the husband is here studying, the wife came in on a spousal open work permit, and what they did with the child that is back home is that the child and the mom of, this, uh, of the husband that is here, they came in on a visitor's visa. So the, the mom of the husband came with the son, with the, uh, with the grandchild, on a visitor's visa and when the child came in because the child is still a minor it was converted to study that's another perspective so to cut it to cut the long story short what you can do is this if you are here as an international student or the moment even if you are still back home wherever you are the moment you apply for your study visa it's advisable you apply alone even if you have a family the moment you apply and you have your visa you can apply right away for your spouse open work permit if you have all the documents especially the enrollment letter if you have it, you can apply right away. Or if you come into Canada, you can do it. So the moment you do that, you can also apply for your child right away too. I mean, with luck on your side and all things being equal, Canada is, a, is set up in a, in a way that they do not like to divide the family. So 
whoever visa officer that's looking into your file knows the importance of family right because even you that you're studying here you can't concentrate with your kids back home so they understand that it's all about getting all the documentation right and submitting it online and who knows before you know it all your families are here in canada do you still have any question that you do not understand based on the analysis that i've done i know it's a lot you can read for yourself i'll be linking the website where you can read more about this drop those questions in the comment section and if you enjoyed this video please smash on the likes button all right viewers i hope you actually understood the video that i brought for you today on how you can actually bring your child if you're married and you have kids even if you're not married as far as you have kids how you can actually bring them to canada if they're more than one I can bring them to Canada. If you have any question, please drop it in the comment section and feel free to actually share this video with whoever you feel will benefit from it. And please endeavor to subscribe to this YouTube channel till I come back to you again. Canada Reality, your own boy MC Benadino. See you in Canada very soon.